Good space time, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Citizen Web3 podcast, a source for educational insights into the Web3 universe and your connection hub to the people that turn code and dreams into decentralized applications and reality. Today, we are joined by the Citadel One validator team. We discuss validator transparency, standardization, the importance of non-custodial staking and revenue streams. We explore governance research, staking in general, upcoming developments and crypto innovations. Finally, we talk about bribes, user tools, privacy and mass adoption. If you enjoy the Citizen Web3 podcast, please share this episode to your favorite social platform and help us spread Web3 values into the universe. I was just thinking, how come ne- like no one actually built this before? Well, where did the atom break? <laughs> Who smashed the atoms? How I explain to my mom what I do because I mean, in no way she will be able to you know to set up any crypto wallet. For me, it was like uh, improved uh, web money or some sort of internet money. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I was kind of meant to say hello and to introduce the guys in a cool way, but I spilled water everywhere. So I'm sorry. Hi, everybody, guys. Uh, we are live, by the way, uh, with Citizens Odyssey. And we have today with us another project, a cool project. You probably know them as a validator, top validator, and not only validator, it's Citadel One. And I have with me Anton and Rina. Hi, guys. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yes, again, yes, again. I, I think we, we actually met with, with Rina, we met several times. And Anton, I'm sure we have met in Moscow possibly several years ago, three or four years no, ago. No, no. No? No? I'm really you were pri- not... private guy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you were not at the Tezos meetup like in 2018 no, no, no. or 19 or something like that? No? Mm, damn, wasn't you. Oh, well. Um... He looks like, you know... <laughs> This very generic person. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a generic person, but he's a private guy. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, uh, I can see that, uh, Arena, you have some echo, but I don't think it's a problem. So, um, I mean, it's a stream. I'm sure people will kind of like um, understand. It's not a problem. Ignore that. It's, it's not. Uh, uh, but but no, not a big deal. Uh, wh- while you're playing around with it, or if you're going to play around with the sound, which you shouldn't, just leave it like that. It's all good. Anton, first question to you. Do you want to introduce yourself? And what do you do? How did you come to work at Citadel? And what does Citadel do? Okay. Does. Uh, I start uh, my career as a software engineer. Uh, so I work on uh, uh, our source development uh, many years before Citadel. Uh, so I try to bring new products to the world, uh, which some uh, uh, companies ask uh, us to develop, to implement. So uh, when I met the guys uh, for Ryan and Citadel one, uh, I start thinking about the crypto as a nice uh, tool set, which uh, we should bring to our users, our stakers. And uh, it was the first concept of the Citadel to uh, to bring something, some features for our users around different ecosystems, around different networks. So that's how C- Citadel One starts. So we will uh, we, we was uh, focused on our product mostly, and uh, I try to lead it. I try to ship new features uh, and uh, explain for our users how they may stake around different ecosystems. So that's my role, and that's why I'm not a public guy, <laughs> because I focused on the software, mostly. We were hiding him. <laughs> <laughs> the gem, the gem. Rina, before, before I move on to you, Anton, um, a bit of a follow-up kind of thing. What about yourself? How did you get into blockchain? How did you connect with, not Citadel, but in general, what, how did you, what brought you into this industry? Oh, it's a hard question because uh, I used Bitcoin many, many years ago, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and uh, that was uh, really uh, not strange, but uh, maybe obvious use case as the money, as a as a money uh, as the money on the early stages, and uh, I just use it to uh, buy some stuff on the internet, to sell some stuff on the internet. For me, it was like uh, improved uh, web money or some sort of internet money. And uh, but I don't start like uh, 
um, huge parts of my life. It, it was just 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 the money <laughs> and that's it but uh one day uh uh while i was a uh, uh, guy from the uh, outsource uh, development company i i met uh, my my colleagues uh and uh, um they uh my current colleagues <laughs> and they asked me to think about staking when it was an early stages with Tezos. So they asked me to run a node, something like that. Uh, I tried, but I failed because I'm not a uh, uh, good uh, DevOps, and uh, I just focused on the um, um, on the engineering, on architecture. I'm not a uh, uh, good skills to run in some some nodes or some sort of stuff. So uh, uh, that's that's how we found our CTO Gregory <laughs> because he could could uh, run our node, but uh, I start thinking about uh, about Citadel as a product. So we uh, was a validator with product from our first stages, our first steps. So we we try to deliver something for our stakers, and we still try, we still improve it. <laughs> This is DevOps. Yeah, DevOps is one of those, I think, um, golden... Like it's DevOps is like community managers, you know, but like the community managers and DevOps, impossible to find in crypto. Like, you know, no, but... Uh, it's really hard. Uh, <laughs> we now have bots. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think for that is the most important guy because if you got uh, brilliant DevOps... You... Yeah, for sure. For sure, I agree. This is our. Uh, ironically, uh, ten minutes ago, I posted on on Twitter uh, from Citizen Cosmos uh, uh, that we are looking for a DevOps. So, <laughs> so uh, you see how how it works. It works fantastically. Rina, what about you? What's your story? How did you get to blockchain, and how did you get to work with Citadel One? A very funny story, though. Um, I hope my echo is not a, like not that bad because I'm literally in his glass room, so that's why probably. But I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. So I started like I started back in today's. Um, I think it was like around 2017. So it's been like more than four years since I've started like working working with crypto. Um, I was involved mainly with the uh, research first. So, you know, I uh, got acquainted with a bunch of networks, as was among the first Ethereum, of course. Then I, um, so like, I was working with some guys who now associated with Settle One, but um, I was mostly focused on research, you know, engaging with some projects as well. So then we started working together with Staking Rewards on this, you know, all-encompassing um, research digest about the staking ecosystem. And that's why I was, like, permanently interested in how, like, staking works, how the staking ecosystem actually develops. And it was like, you know, I'm staking OG, and so, which means when I joined Citadel, so it was really, it, it was kind of, you know, a point of my interest to be involved with the validator role. But back in the days, it was not as transparent, and the validator role itself, it wasn't that important. At all. So... I've started doing some, you know, some general operations work. Like I, I think I'm still doing a bunch of, you know, of different parts. Like if something is uncovered, I still, I am. Me and Anton, we are the people who basically solve the issues, right? If something, you know, comes up. But yeah, um, I, I started to work with the business development side, um, also. Keep, keeping my independent research and I'm switching more to developer relations person because we'll be launching our SDK so I'm definitely looking to onboard like, like some more use cases to settle one <clears throat> yeah and actually yes I think we met at the Tezos meetup with you and uh, past human and yeah it was quite a story because when I and recall this I actually found the picture when Gregory was speaking at the stage and we were just you know spread around the this room was so amazing it's just it's it's not real <laughs> it didn't happen no, no, i'm joking i know it didn't no 100 percent no <laughs> but when you say by the way a, fo a small follow-up question when you say independent research do you want to talk about it a little bit if you can of course 
Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So um, I was like mainly involved with the general research, right? Nothing uh, super technical or anything. But then um, I'm currently involved with some like academic programs. And recently, like I think maybe half a year ago, I joined Validated Commons, and they were particularly focused on governance research uh, associated with this MetaGov um, organization uh, based out of Stanford, if I remember it correctly. So. Basically, there's a bunch of people who are trying to standardize, you know, the validator practices, uh, governance practices, and so I joined this MetaGov thing. I was trying to uh, follow up everything, um, and then uh, I basically decided to run this academic research focus on Cosmos governance, um, basically to figure out how the narrative, the general narrative for the Cosmos ecosystem affects the the governance happening on chain. So um, it will be kind of all encompassing research, so like nothing specifically, but I'll be definitely focusing on the level of engagement of validators and how, um, you know, it actually affects the value accrual for the ecosystem in general. So yeah, I'm very excited for it, honestly. So and I met a bunch of guys who are also working in it. For example, like guys from Chorus One, uh, some guys from um, Australian University. So it's kind of a dope. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very keen to see where it's going. Would lo- would love to hear later on if um, we have time what you found out about it. Uh, but um, first question first, Anton, back to you. Um, could you? share with us like the spec of products because as far as i understand you guys have quite a wide range of um things that you do do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the ones that you want to mention and maybe you know the ones that are the flagship products so to say i mean of course the staking application probably but uh, maybe something else okay uh so we start uh as a uh dashboard for uh, overall of your rewards and uh, some simple analytics around your stake. So it was the first concept for Citadel. Uh, and we still provide such, da- such data for our stakers around different ecosystems, not only Cosmos. Uh, for example, I don't know, for I- IOST users or Icon or some other ecosystems so, or Polkadot. <laughs> so um, that tells us, yeah. So, um, it was the first concept. So just a dashboard without any valid features, without any specific features, so without any interactions with the crypt. But uh, when you just uh, ship such a uh, dashboard, you start thinking about uh, how you may unify staking around uh, different ecosystems. So we start thinking about it, and we deliver our first version uh, of not the wallet, but some sort of the dashboard like Kepler provide for the users, for the staking, for the redelegation, for claim, for other features around uh, around the staking. So uh, after it, we standardize it in, around uh, different uh, ecosystems and think about uh, uh, delivering more features around uh, crypto because you want to lock your users right on the, on your platform. So uh, that's how we. Um, not not an event, but how we start to make some MVPs for DApps, which based on our uh, platform. Uh, what's the difference between DApp uh, in uh, just in and uh, in in some common way and uh, DApp uh, on the platform? Uh, DApp on the platform can be um, linked or executed uh, from other application right on the platform because it's much easier to make. Uh, some communications between them. So um, we start to um, research that approach and uh, we ship our first uh, dep on Citadel, right on the Citadel, um, I think in uh, December um, uh, 2022. And uh, now we uh, finish our dev center for any developers team who want to start with the citadel as an entry point for the crypto project and they may easily develop some mvp some uh, hackathon project and uh, ship it right on the citadel uh, if you got some huge project with ton of the features you may also create 
uh, or redevelop your product uh, on our platform. But uh, what the um, benefits for that approach? Uh, you shouldn't think uh, in the future, not now, <laughs> you shouldn't think about some integration for, for example, for on-ramp exchange for some DEXs because you may just uh, in the future use uh, some swap aggregator like Apple Pay. So you shouldn't think about such uh, complex use cases because now, for example, uh, LIDAR wrote you uh, to the one inch if uh, they price uh, become depict uh, from Ethereum. So you shouldn't go to another product to buy some tokens and use them uh, in uh, LIDAR after it. And it's uh, not so good for the user because you shouldn't, you should switch one product to another, come back after and uh, do some actions after. But LIDAR is a simple product for user's interaction because you couldn't uh, make a lot of features around it. You could just wrap token or unwrap or uh, get some derivatives, but uh, there, are, uh, there, there is no so many features around it. But if you got some complex product, for example, if you got some, I don't know, social network, which based on the crypto, you need to mint NFTs, you mint some tokens for some interactions. You, got, you, you may uh, implement really uh, many other dApps uh, for your social network, but now it's uh, really hard, uh, hard problem to solve because you need to implement each dApp right on your platform, redevelop it or use uh, existing uh, dApps and uh, it's really hard. But it's, it's really strange because uh, crypto don't um, increase complexity for, uh, from, from, from the beginning because uh, if you try to remember the first uh, hard contract, they are not on the same level, of course, but they don't uh, make some, uh, some leap forward, some uh, increasing of the level of the complexity because you still work with... Uh, some smart contracts and that's it you don't uh, use uh, bunches on of that contracts you don't you don't use benefits from other uh, depths and that's really strange but uh, i think uh, uh, the only explanation for for it it's uh, just uh, like uh, um, we start thinking about web free world uh, really early and uh, we don't think about that um, uh, that shift from Web two to Web three, we, we we think uh, that we should solve any any problem with Web three approach. And uh, I don't try to push uh, Web three back to back to to Web two because it's uh, it's strange too. But you you may use the benefits because most of the uh, great solutions for Ethereum, for example, also uh, got some Web two features because some data providers. Uh, store most of the data um, on the databases. They don't provide it directly from the blockchain. They just uh, re um, rework them the, and uh, uh, they just uh, drop in uh, some Web2 web services. So, and that's okay. That's not a problem for, for me. Um, but some people, uh, some crypto guys, think that we should use only Web3 uh, on the decentralized, decentralized application, and uh, I think it stuck uh, us um, uh, hard because we couldn't uh, just create some uh, brilliant products or products with uh, really simple um, usage for regular users right now because uh, regular users won't switch from sex because uh, it's much easier to interact with crypto on sex. You shouldn't think about transaction signing you shouldn't think about uh, mnemonic <laughs> yeah but now but now it starts shift but in any case it's really hard to uh, onboard in crypto and uh, there are many issues around because you need to know so much you need to know how to uh, sign transaction what you should you should think what you sign right now and uh, you couldn't just use some service or trust to some service because you need to research each service uh, which which you you want to use, and uh, it's really hard to 
uh, send your crypto from one network to another, but it's just like a basic case, especially if you got, I don't know, few ecosystems which not connected like an IBC way. It's really hard to, to manage it right now. Uh, and uh, it also hard for experienced user because if you know that there is a bridge uh, somewhere between some networks, you need to go there, you need to make the transaction. That takes really much time. So our concept is uh, based some use case on specific applications and interact between them. But we are on the early stages because the first, first year we spent for building apps for the first layer of, uh, of the applications on our platform. So in the next year, we um, will provide our dev center for new groups of the developers. And also uh, we are focused on our aggregator aggreg aggregation applications like dex aggregator or nft aggregator and you may mint nft or use some dex around any ecosystem which we support so that's a concept and rena if uh, considering what uh, anton just said that you want to be like a layer for onboarding users um let's imagine that i was not somebody who was familiar with the concept of staking so LE5 to me, what Citadel One does. I am not from the crypto world. I've never heard about blockchain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, five minute explanation by Anton is not excessive enough. But um, yeah, um, so how I explain to my mom what I do, because I mean, in no way she will be able to, you know, to set up any crypto wallet. I mean, she does not even understand the difference between Bitcoin and blockchain in general. So I'd say we are trying to make crypto accessible for um for any kind of newbies, we're still on the, you know, on a very long way to this. But I um, interface level uh, is like, you know, in our values, like in our beliefs, is, is the trick of mass adoption. If we bring, uh, you know, this general financial experience, like general or financial application experience to crypto, it will be so much easier to onboard and sustain users. And we are also trying to um, not only to um, provide the basic functionality, right, not only to uh, enable sending or enable staking, uh, but we're also trying to provide more complex solutions. So by packing and abstracting this crypto logic for users, we're actually, actually bringing a lot of empowerment to the projects while building value. So if, if I'm talking to my mom, I'd say, so people are building projects uh, and we're trying to, you know, um, make it easier for users to know and actually, you know, access those specific projects and use it. So yeah, uh, in, in a couple of words, it, it will be like making crypto more accessible and yeah and in non-custodial way like so you don't have to share any kind of private information right and also um cross-platform so it's usable between various kinds of platforms like web platform web free wallet if you prefer the file so we're trying to make it all encompassing and you know usable I guess, I guess, I guess the main thing is you also can get paid for it, right? So <laughs> get a reward for that. I mean, for the normal oh, user, oh, you no, forgot staking. to say that. Come on, oh, she doesn't know. Oh, she doesn't know that, that you can get paid. <laughs> staking hundred percent. Staking, yeah. Because like, if I try to explain Citadel, is a bit different to how I explain staking, right? Because like what we do, like product level, is a bit different mm -hmm. to what we do as a validator. And I'm not sure if I can explain validator to my yeah. mom. Like you know, you know, it, it won't be like you know, the short story, you know. Um, but yeah, staking, of course, is how you, it, it's like alternative to the general financial markets, but in crypto, so. <laughs> yeah. And it works it's like not, a bank deposit. Right, right. It, and it's it's also like, see, it's not it's not looking any solid to her. <laughs> you know, honestly, it, it just, you know, some, some kind of well, schema, I mean, right? So you have to be. Well, you could use. Yeah. I you could use Solitaire. I guess you could say Solitaire, but with rewards. 
Like you, you, you solve solitaire and you get, you know, one, I don't know, one euro for every time you, you, you finish solving solitaire. Now I guess bad example, bad example, but in the future, maybe, you know, maybe. Um, so guys, next question that I have is, and it's for both of you and maybe Anton and then Rina, you can answer in turns or, or one of you. Um, I'm trying to, um, kind of like put a time frame on when Citadel starting expanding. And I remember the point where Citadel was a very small validator. And then very quickly, it was a very quick flip. Like you didn't have that progression line. Like usually, you know, sometimes, not, not every validator, but most validators, they're either small, either big, or they have the slow grow steady or slow grow fall. For you, it wasn't like that. It was like, pam, pam. Um, what do you, um, I mean, you, you already said that your focus is, I mean, at least for the outsiders, of course, from the inside, it might have been very different. I'm only judging from the outside right now. And of course, you have already mentioned that your focus is on making things simple, on boarding users, and that probably helped you to achieve that. What else, in your opinion, um, helped you to become a very, well, not the largest validator, but I would say you are a very big validator. So what helped you, in your opinion, to achieve that um, place? I think uh, when we start to uh, incentivize uh, our stakers to stake on us, but some validators think that that's uh, the bad practice because it's, um, in, in some point of view, it sounds like a bribe or some, some sort of it. But I think uh, it's much better than to set uh, zero fee for uh, your um, for for staking for staking fee like some validators do, and uh, most of the validators try to solve that, that problem either. So I think uh, that incentivization uh, one of the uh, our I don't know secret sources <laughs> of that of that growth. Uh, actually, yeah, I think it's like three main points. Uh, of course, actually rewards for staking is one of them. I'm pretty sure because, I mean, incentives gonna buy your attention. But um, another thing is, of course, we've been communicating um, a lot of, you know, a lot of value to the ecosystem, I believe, like by actually contributing and starting some point, like the more people are educated about like, who is the good validator to stick with? So people understand that the uh, the value of contribution that validator is actually bringing because it's a long term value accrual for the ecosystem. And so this is another point. So like people got to use Settle One. Uh, people understood we are building some tools like we have. But we also very consistent in in voting. You know, expressing our opinions. You know, just you know, sharing public information about how we cast votes, uh, and then of course we got you know um, at some point we started to scale to Cosmos networks like crazy. So I think um, we we've been integrating like maybe ten projects, maybe fifteen projects like in a couple of months. So uh, it was very easy for us to join new networks and you know um, come and contribute there by integrating um, it inside Settle. One. And then, of course, we started to scale the functionality, so we started to add dApps. And, you know, a lot of people uh, are just, you know, remained, um, like, when they come to Citadel, they are sustained as users. So, like, you know, they, I think they just come and like us and then stay and bring friends. And at a certain point, it was, like, easier to scale as a validator. Um, so, yeah, I guess this is like the main three points, like city incentives, the contribution and the communication mainly. So. I'm, I'm, I'm going to like play a little bit devil's advocate now because, but it's questions to help me to understand and everybody who's listening and your community, how you guys work. So all validators uh, incentivize in some way, of course, because they have to pay out rewards. So they're already incentivizing. All validators communicate and all validators, in their own opinion, bring value. So everything you said, everybody does, but not everybody becomes big. So what is the, I mean, you both mentioned incentivization. 
Could you maybe like expand what kind of incentives and in, like how did you shape that system to help it stand out from other validators? Because others did it as well, but they didn't make it big. So obviously you were doing something better. <laughs> so I'm trying to understand what it was. X City is just you know like a cashback for you know for staking a settle one node via settle one platform. So I haven't seen you know much people doing that in, in crypto. I know like Clue Mediz validator is doing this. Lost human, Lost human of I course, think. yes. Yeah. So like Audit One back in the days did that. But it's not like a common practice, and it was like one of the main drivers. And also, I think in a, another like important point. So I was mentioning like we scale like faster to like to a bunch of networks. And so when a user starts to you know to use the Cosmos ecosystem, it's normally not only one project. So it's you know you're staking a cash and then you're staking persistence and also you're getting to know Juno and you just see Settle One everywhere and you also use Settle One platform. And I guess this is how we also, you know, got our name maybe, like the awareness. So maybe that was it, but I'm not entirely the sure. Package? The yeah, package the together, package together. The... But also yeah, so like we we are, you know, I think we're a brand now, especially after this situation with Jacob Gadikan, right? <laughs> Everybody knows. I have I have questions from I have I have questions from Jacob, but we will leave them towards the end. Wait, we're gonna go progressive because Jacob did ask questions publicly. So I will of course ask, but um let's leave it to the end. And no, it is true though. I think all those things contribute. I, I, I think like jokes aside, like those things of course contribute. And I, th I think you were very at one point, I remember seeing Citadel everywhere. Like, I remember, like, okay, I did see Citadel somewhere in the Explorer. And then at one point, Citadel, pam, 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 here, here. And I think, of course, that must have contributed to your growth. Because, of course, when you see the project everywhere and you see good things from them, and, okay, maybe subjectively you don't agree with something, but still, if the project is growing, you kind of think, okay, they're growing I want to be part of it. So I think that is, in my opinion, at least contributed to, to, to you guys. Um, another question that I, I, I kind of um, had in mind is, well, that I ask every validator that, that we do a profile in, like kind of think for, is what do you guys plan for? Um, of course, you kind of gave it away when Anton was talking about all the services that you're planning. But let's talk about more realistic short-term plans, maybe. Uh, maybe project. <laughs> Damn, that's not going to work, is it? But uh, let's try. Let's try. Like like something that you guys are planning that you can talk about in the next like half a year or three, four months, maybe onboarding new networks, maybe starting new services. If you could share that, that would be very, 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 very cool. Uh, from application perspective, uh, which builds uh, built in, in Citadel, I think we uh, focus on the uh, DAP uh, of DEX aggregator. So uh, they try to deliver something like a Rango uh, exchange uh, deliver for the users. So we want to aggregate current uh, DEXs to provide a single service, a single application, to which combine uh, DEXs and bridges. So um, we want to use uh, IBC and Axela to transfer token around uh, different ecosystems, and we may use DEXs to convert the tokens directly from one to, to another. So that's the plan for uh, next uh, half of the year. I think we also will uh, ship uh, some uh, NFT applications uh, because uh, we need to cover that uh, area of the apps, of the type of the apps. Um, maybe we will change a little bit uh, the plans, but that's a, a main plan for, for application. Uh, from um, our wallet perspective or dashboard perspective, um, I think we will focus on the uh, notification of our users about uh, airdrops, about uh, new features and new, new applications because we got a lack uh, of uh, features uh, there. So we, we ask our users uh, which not use uh, web-free entrance, uh, web-free login, 
about about uh, about the uh, email, but we don't send um, different types of emails because uh, we only send some um, basically reports about the uh, staking rewards, and that's it. So we want to uh, make it uh, more useful for our users and provide more data. But if they want to uh, get some emails, that's okay. They may just disable it, and that's it. Rina, what about from the business development side of your side of the project? What do you have in plans? Any new partnerships, maybe, or um, something that you could share with your stakers? Or, or... yeah, I mean, uh, I am mostly excited for the developer center launch because we'll be able to actually onboard some new use cases that are, you know, being built separately or already existing projects. But yeah, so um, I'm mainly working with like with Anton regarding the applications, so we can you know be very you know consistent in terms of um, getting new projects onboarded. So I guess we'll be scaling for sure for newly launched networks within the Cosmos ecosystem, Archway, like Quicksilver upon its launch. Like we also have some plans, I guess, to integrate the liquid staking solutions like Stride inside the application section. And actually, Stride is working heavily on providing, um, you know, validator metrics, which just like I mean, uh, to have this, you know, all aggregated regarding different validators. And I'm also looking, um, you know, me personally and Citadel is looking to contribute to, to this. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, we've been in touch with multiple ecosystems um, and Cosmos, and also I'm looking to Sui possibly. Um, but yeah. The, the best thing about Settle One as a product is that we can, you know, we can onboard um, Ethereum application as easy as we can onboard like any kind of Cosmos app. So in terms of business development, we are super open to any kind of, you know, to any kind of opportunity. So we are looking for products. We we're not looking to integrate some, you know, some one day bullshit. And, you know, when it's real use case, it's, it actually has the value. We're definitely uh, having plans to get it integrated into several one. And, yeah. When, when you talk about values, guys, could you um, share a little bit? Um, I, I'll tell you where I'm coming from. And this is going to be kind of like a pre-question, um, pre-story, sorry. Um, like, especially when we saw the bull market, and I think it was very evident to a lot of crypto users, to a lot of users even from the side, that there is some kind of entity within blockchain, within crypto space, it's called validator. It doesn't matter which validator. Uh, those validators, they make profit, especially during the bull market. And if I was to consider myself as somebody who is obsessed with blockchains, which I am, and I think of blockchains as the digital nations, you know, like big nations out there, which we're going to build in the future and la 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 la. So validators to me are kind of like businesses and each business, they build like certain something within those nations. So my obvious question as a citizen of, of a nation is what is this business doing with this money? I, I, I want to know because they saying they're helping my nation grow. So the question to, to, to Citadel is what does Citadel stand for? What is the, I mean, I understand onboarding new people to crypto. I like that. This is something that I can understand. But what is underneath all of that? I mean, you didn't just guys wake up and say, hey, let's onboard people to crypto. Like what is motivating you? What is pushing you to do what you guys doing? What is your number one, not number one motivation, but what is the motivation? <laughs> I think I, 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 Damn, that's it. <laughs> I, th I think uh, it's uh, really easy to answer the question, but it's hard to explain it properly because uh, I think crypto moves on right direction, but uh, it's uh, but that road should be uh, much longer than anyone tried to imagine in their head because. Uh, we just want to live in web free world, but we couldn't just drop all web two features, web two advantages, and said, "Okay, we start our true web free uh, lifestyle, and uh, we use only DApps, and we forget about all 
good practices from Web2. So I think we just um, imagine right now uh, that Web3 rewards are really... Mm, uh, it looks like a bright city from the future and the bright future which uh, should definitely start from, I don't know, next year, but we need much more time. I think all industry need much, much more time because there are no uh, so many approaches, for example, for uh, um, simple and secure storing of your um, mnemonic because now I think uh, the best practices is a ledger, but ledger not so good in many use cases. It's hard to uh, use it in, in some specific ecosystem. It's hard to um, make some bench of transactions with ledger because they got specific architecture on their side. So I need, I think, uh, much more competition around uh, various solutions, around various steps in that um, crypto Mm, not an activity. And uh, uh, we need much more competition around wallets. We need much more competition around uh, uh, wallet, wallet with uh, extremely secured features. And uh, all areas need much more um, companies and uh, much more competition. Uh, that's, um, I think, motivate us to move that um, that uh, new approach to try to implement new approaches for the wallet for the platform to deliver uh, that useful crypto experience for everyone. So um, it's really um, it's really easy concept to explain for non crypto user, but when you try to explain what you try to bring for uh, crypto user, they, they said, "Okay, we got depths, and you just try." Uh, redevelop all dApps right on your platform, and that's it. That's a concept. So I think uh, it's much easier to explain it for my mom than for I don't know some uh, crypto tech guy. I do not agree. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> do you want to add? Do you want to add to Anton's answer, uh, Rina? Um, your own version? Yeah. I mean, if like because people have been asking me like why we said it all, and I think. I share the core values and the actually the values we have come from like we've been non custodial since the day one and only now people start to understand like how self custody actually matters and um, so settle for me is a, just you know a coincidence of really good values like you know we're trying to simplify the way people interact with group it's one of course I mean this is what Anton is talking about like uh, you know, the find the optimal way to do that and actually abstract a bunch of things from, you know, this natural group to complexity. But the second one is that um, we've been fighting for those ideals and even, you know, we've been, uh, we've been speaking in Dubai, I guess, this March maybe, and we've been, uh, you know, um, telling how we are coming from this non-custodial branch of crypto and how it is important. And back in the days, people would be just like, yeah, but non-custodial, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of points for user management, like, you know, key management and everything. And I just, I do believe, like, um, this is this is why we've been, we've been studying this all and this is why we're very keen to have it all in one and making the entrance for crypto in general and the user story inside crypto like less painful but i don't really think that it's easier to explain this concept to you know non-crypto folks because i mean it, i don't think there's this kind of application um, in web 2 honestly because in web 2 they have like completely different issues they're solving so maybe this part is not is not you know not so clear to me but yeah you know being non-custodial and you know doing great stuff like building the user stories is definitely the value i share personally if if i was to imagine that um in five years time or i don't know ten this is five six and a half six and a half years from now um all the web 2 features that anton is mentioning has been you know now exist in web 3 
and Web 2 is not needed anymore. Just a hypothetical situation, six and a half years. I don't know if it's enough or not. Um, 10 years, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, uh, and, and you know, Web3 is now able to do theoretically all the secure, as, as securely, as efficiently, and as scalably all the things Web2 today can do. Uh, what is Citadel 1 doing in that scenario? What is the role Citadel 1 is playing? Because now the user onboarding happened. What is Citadel 1 doing next? I think uh, our focus on the uh, long run is to be some sort of the operational system for the crypto. So we just provide uh, features for specific networks or development teams, and they use it uh, like, um, like a tool set. So if you know that some network focused on the, some specific use case, okay, you just use it like a, like a tool set. So from, I think, developer's perspective, it looks like uh, AWS uh, for development. So if you need to store some data on the blockchain, you use blockchain A. If you need to do some blockchain for NFTs or roll-up in the Ethereum world for NFTs, you just use blockchain B. And you onboard users directly to that networks, and you provide specific features from net with that networks uh, through the applications. So that's, from my perspective, how that complexity increasing works because you wrote use it direct, directly and provide some uh, generalized interface for all uh, that networks, uh, but uh, that's a single app for some specific use case like an NFT or whatever you want. I like that. It's an easy concept to, to comprehend. And what about you, Rina? Do you have the same vision as Anton? Or oh, 100%, 100%. Would you want to add? This yeah, is genius. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! <laughs> we got it. Um, uh, guys, what about, like, um, let, let, let's... Um, one, one more question. Oh, two, one. Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, what is, in your opinion, since we're on the topic of, of uh, onboarding web two to web three, I guess. Um, what is, in your opinion, the biggest abstraction right now? What is the biggest problem that doesn't allow us today to say, fuck web two, we don't need web two anymore. Here is web three, let's use it. It's amazing. Education and key management. <laughs> this Education is and key management. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's very good. And Anton, what about you? For me, I think uh, that... Um, mm, that focus on the one specific address in uh, one moment of the your user experience because it's hard to switch every time, especially on MetaMask, uh, and change your network and change your address and change the permissions for address for specific devs. It's really hard for regular users which not adopted for that experience. And I think it's hard to start thinking right from the context of your single end address because I think that's uh, one of the so key management <laughs> some sort of key management yeah okay <laughs> okay let's generalize it <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no but but it's true but it's true I remember I remember like um, I mean I was I was following Cosmos from 2016 maybe end of 15 maybe I heard but I didn't read until 2016 nothing Ah, well, whatever, yeah, something like that. But, uh, but uh, you know, I, I didn't believe my when, when last year, was it last year? Yeah, it was only 2021 in the summer when uh, Osmosis launched. And I was like, oh, my God, it works. You don't need to, like, change things. And this was already a progress. And this was already a progress. And I can only hope that, you know, in five years' time, we're going to forget about what is key management and, uh, I don't know, like Anton, maybe it's going to be like like you say, uh, different uh, onboarding points, or it's an operational system, or, or, or another system that allows you to to start your own project. And I mean, I'm only hoping that that's the future. What's going to look like? So uh, well, let's hope for that. Um, one a bit of controversial topic, which I have to ask um, the whole Jacob story, guys. Like um, this was. Uh, 
<laughs> this was um uh, let's keep it civilized of course i am not going to like now go ah oh, you have to answer me right but I, I would like to understand because jacob has left questions publicly so and uh, i think it's fair enough only for me to to ask those questions to you and what happened well why did you guys suddenly like start boof, and what where did the atom break <laughs> who smashed the atoms <laughs> No, obviously it was me, <laughs> but uh, uh, idea of uh, my post was uh, just point Jacob that he need to explain why we act like this, but he don't try to answer it. He start blame us on uh, unsecurity activity that uh, I don't know. I got connections with the Jackal DAO team and uh, that stuff that mm, endless. Uh, bullshit floods on all, uh, all all channels on Discord, in uh, Twitter, and uh, I don't want to attract additional um, additional uh, uh, attention for that situation, especially because uh, Jacob wants to to get it, and uh, that's it. But if he wants to explain his uh, actions in that situation, he may just easily provide it. He may say, said, okay, I just to ask to stop because of something, and uh, I don't uh, uh, found some uh, issues with uh, Jekyll, but he just repeats some strange topics, and he changed it, and he blamed that. I share some private screenshots, but he also sent some private screenshots. In any case, that's not a private Discord. That's a Discord from the validator, and uh, anyone who got the link may uh, be part of that uh, Discord. So that's a complex story, uh, but I just want to point Jacob that he should explain why he act like this. That's it. I don't want to attack him. I don't want to come... Uh, to add some competition in his activity around the uh, security of the networks because our contribution is uh, really different. We don't mm, uh, got some uh, developers who rework or review code of the nodes. That's not our part of the work. But he starts to blame us in all bad things around the crypto. He, he named me a stupid guy and so on and so on and that's a boring uh, story <laughs> from my perspective because if he want to answer he may do it easily but he want to create some additional mess honestly it was like a misunderstanding from both sides like and we do not uh, want to you know to diminish the value of Jacob as a contributor, is he, you know, a very good like value um, add to the ecosystem and everything. So I think it was just, you know, it was just a set of actions that were not, you know, coordinated properly. So and this is very sad and it's been, you know, a huge like exhausting point for us for a couple of, you know, a couple of days and as well for Jacob. So um I'm I'm kind of you know I don't I don't think it's you know it's it's necessary to fair enough. to go back to this topic though. So. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna twist the question to keep your and Jacob's story out of it, but uh, like to make it a generalized question that has got nothing to do with you and Jacob, but to understand your opinion on um, those kind of situations. So let's forget about that. And um, what do you think, guys, about? Um, validators transparency should in your opinion validators work be and i'm not talking about just the work we do as validators uh, like the networks we support or or or, or our um, of course we cannot say where our nodes are or, because that's a security thing that is stupid but in terms of let's say um, accounting for example right or uh, let's say the people we employ or um, uh, any of the inside kitchen, should that kind of, because a validator is a public entity, should all of that work, in your opinion, or any of it be public, or should all of those things be kept private, and that is up to validators to decide, 
because there are at the end private entities, even though they're public, they are private entities. So uh, I think you get the question. Should the work of a validator be public or should only, or should the validator decide which part be public and which part be private? Uh, I think it depends on a validator type because some validators focus on the uh, funds uh, attraction to staking and some validators focus on some small stakers and uh, there is a difference between the types because uh, if you based on the um, on the I don't know small stakers you need to be more transparent because you try to provide some applications for that stakers you try to provide some information some videos some some activity from your side so I think if uh, such stakers or other validators ask you about your activity and ask you about the transparency you you should uh, answer to that questions because you you based on the public uh, on the public users, not the funds, not the, some private deals or some sort of it. So I think uh, you should uh, just explain why you act uh, uh, like I don't know, like like Jacob did, and uh, you may you should just uh, explain why uh, why and uh, uh, what you try to do with some uh, I don't know with some with, with some. Uh, uh, activities like uh, fund spendings, with some activities like network stop, with some I don't know major events in your story, like a validator. So I think that's good enough because uh, I remember a story how uh, one of our stakers asked us about uh, some uh, Juno uh, government's proposals, decisions from our side because they changed our opinion, and that users ask us why we did like this. So why we change our opinion about uh, one of the question? So I think that's a, uh, that's a good situation to explain it. So if you attract uh, people's uh, tokens to your uh, to your node, you should explain your your mm, decisions on the governments or some other decisions either. So that's that's why I try to point. On, on Jacob's activity in that situation because he is a public validator and that's it. So I think that's 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 a good explanation of such. Arena, living living as 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 you said, so we can like live. <laughs> like, let's abstract that question from the situation. I yeah, can see. I just I want to explain. It, so, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so abstract that question. If you want to add to that question, abstracting the situation. Yeah, um... Do you think a validator <laughs> should be uh, um, public? I like Anton's answer actually because it's a very logical no, answer. No, 100%. If you're attracting, if you're attracting uh, tokens from from delegators, you should go out there and explain why you're making anything. What about you, Rina? Do you think that that spot validator should be like that, public or, or, or private? Yeah, uh, I'm certainly agreeing that um, it depends on the case, but I do think like validators should keep, you know, accountable. So, for example, the metrics I'd like to see like from very community-based validators like, you know, is basically reward management. And so the idea I was pushing back in today's um, is to have this kind of information, not only regarding the contributions of validators, not, not only like, you know, the monitoring, the setup information, you know, just like, you know, a formal registry, but also, you know, the policies they have, how they vote, how they manage their rewards, um, what kind of, you know, structure do they have. And it, it seems like it's a very important metric for um, for outside stakers too. So it's actually good if Valder can stand for, you know, specific structure it has. And um, having this kind of information in public will actually contribute a lot to the general transparency and bring a lot of like good Valder practices. So I do believe like for, you know, custodial Valders, if we can name them, uh, it's it's a whole different story. But if we're talking about the, you know, retail Valders, for sure, we should have some, you know, public information available, and Valder should always keep this kind of communication with the staker if 
he has any kind of questions, it's very important that he cover your, you know, the policies, insurance policies, for example. You know, it, it just should be available to the general public. Okay, thank you, guys. Guys, to wrap it all up, is there something that um, you, as an experienced, uh, not only validator, but a blockchain project with several years of experience already out there, um, what would you suggest? This is something I like to ask older projects um, to anyone out there who wants to start, not necessarily a validator, but they want to start to not to work for another company in crypto, but they want to become their own business inside crypto. What is your suggestion to these people today? Somebody who's already uh, did a lot of bumps, how we say in Russian, right? Uh, bum, bum. As in, went through a lot. Hmm. It's a hard question for current market uh, situation. But I think uh, you should think about uh, revenue streams because if you try to uh, create some new software uh, for the some sort of the wallet, uh, the biggest issue for all of them is that they couldn't uh, create some revenue stream because you couldn't just add some fee for any transaction on your platform because it's... Uh, look strange and uh, users will switch to another wallet. So um, I think uh, you should definitely think about uh, uh, revenue streams and uh, you should try to make it a sustainable business. I, I understand that uh, it sounds a little bit strange for the crypto sustainability and, and, and crypto, but you, you should try. Um, I have my own perspective to this, like uh, possibly um, if you can uh, research this stuff and actually dig into the user flow, dig into how the system, uh, specific like ecosystem operates, uh, you may find some specific points like weak points from the user perspective, some pain points happening for either projects or uh, all the users. And if no one is trying to build something to cover it, it's right to turn, right? So, for example, uh, I've met guys from Rockaway Labs, and they started to build this observatory zone, which is, um, you know, in a sense, just the aggregator for validator metrics, like technical, so verifiable and also, you know, just very detailed, factual. So, and how come, I was just like, I was just looking at this product and uh, they've just started it a couple of months ago and they've joined crypto a couple of months ago from cybersecurity perspective. And I, I was just thinking, how come that, like no one actually built this before and so this is about covering the pain points for various groups of like people so I mean there's always room and crypt is still in a very initial stage so it just like you know makes sense to figure out what kind of stuff you can actually provide from a user perspective from a project perspective so this actually excited me a lot I was just like yeah guys this is something necessary <laughs> Uh, definitely you guys like i mean both uh, like anton said and you said that oh it might not go together with crypto but uh, if i was to suggest i would suggest the same things because spending a long time in crypto and trying to avoid sustainability and trying to avoid like things like research and all that and going it's it's very difficult to do it i mean there is only so much intuition where intuition i think stops and then you you cannot scale anymore so i totally agree with what you guys are saying there guys um Thank you very, very, very much for finding the time to, to join me. Um, I hope to speak uh, more with you in the future, but uh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye. This content was created by the Citizen Web3 Validator. You may support our work by delegating to any of our nodes.